In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a basic RLC circuit with some resistors, uh, with an inductor, and a capacitor as well. And as you can see, they're wired up in a parallel circuit with a 20 volt source. So um, as the switch is closed eventually, um, this circuit over here is going to represent um, the time at about zero seconds immediately after the circuit is complete. And the second one over here, we're going to work it out after an extended amount of time has passed. Now, some basics about the capacitor inductor are this. They basically act um, oppositely of each other in the sense that the inductor starts with a very large amount of resistance and doesn't let any current flow through. And then the capacitor does allow the current to flow up to one of its plates. Now, after some time has passed and the capacitor has gotten all charged up, it does not allow any current to flow and charge to stick to its plate anymore. And then the inductor has its current increased as its resistance decreases. So the first thing that happens is the inductor over here is very resistant to change. So as the electrons are trying to come through, there is a extremely high amount of resistance in this branch. So they are going to move around and then begin to charge that eight microfarad capacitor. So initially, all there is is basically just five ohms of resistance. So if we use Ohm's law, we have 20 volts divided by five ohms, and then we'll have four amps of current running through this five ohm resistor, and then it's gonna create a voltage drop of 20 volts as it passes through. And then from there, um, that current is going to slowly decay down to zero. So those are our initial conditions for this branch over here. And then as I said earlier, we don't have any current running through this branch. Therefore, there are no voltage drops. All right, so now we have our capacitor starting to get more and more charged up to the point where there is no potential difference between the 20 volt um, power source and the capacitor, therefore not allowing charge to flow through that branch anymore. So as the electrons come out, they are going to feel less and less resistance in this branch, and then they will pass through this outside branch and then move through the 10 ohm resistor and the inductor as well. Now, with that being said, um, it does not feel the resistance of that 5 ohm resistor, just the 10. So then it's going to have 20 volts over 10 ohms, and then it's going to allow 2 amps of current to pass through. So we're going to have 2 amps of current passing through the 10 ohm resistor and 2 amps of current passing through the 2 Henry inductor. Um, that would mean that the voltage across the 10 ohm resistor is going to be the full 20 volts because if this one does not have any resistance at that moment where the two amps are running through, then it's not going to have any voltage drop as it did before. Now, speaking of the before, this one has a potential difference of 20 volts, which could be considered negative as well because it has a back EMF that's basically canceling out that 20 volts that's trying to push the electrons through. Okay, but over here, there is no potential difference anymore. The current is just flying through and there is no resistance at that point. Now, the final thing we're gonna take a look at is the charge of our eight microfarad capacitor. And because it initially got charged up from that 20 volt source, it will have a delta V of 20. So then the Q is going to equal CV. So the Q equals eight microfarads times the 20 volts. Which then means that it would have a charge of 160 microcoulombs when everything is all said and done for its charging process. So taking a look at a basic RLC circuit, uh, things to know are that the inductor has an extremely high resistance that does not allow current to flow initially, and the capacitor is gonna get a lot of that initial flow of electrons, and it's gonna start to charge and then cause the current to decay that's flowing towards it. 
as that current is decaying towards this branch over here, it's going to increase going through the inductor until the inductor's resistance drops down to its, until it's basically a short circuit. And then it allows the full current to fly through this entire branch. And then at that point, there is no delta V for the inductor, um, but just the delta V across that 10 ohm resistor. And then while all that's happening, uh, there, here is the Q value of that 160 microcoulombs that's causing the electrons to stop their flow through that middle branch. So I hope that was helpful to you. Thank you for watching and listening.